Hi everyone, uh, this is Sir Gavs again. This is my fourth video about parabolas. In the previous videos, I was discussing the definition, the eccentricity, the elements in a graph of a parabola, the equations of the parabolas, and also one example in graphing a parabola. This time is another example in graphing a parabola with um, a little bit spicy. There is already um, uh, a fraction involved, but just uh, very minimal. Okay? So here we have uh, to sketch the graph of the parabola whose equation is represented by y minus 1 quantity squared equals negative 8x minus 4. So the equation is uh, this one, and it looks like this format. Okay, so only the right-hand side is not really exactly the same as this one, because you have to factor out this numerical coefficient first. So you have to remember that when you um, uh, when you solve or when you graph parabolas, you have to make sure that it's, it is exactly in the standard form so that you will be guided with the vertex and or you're obligated on how to start. Okay? So at least in the easier way. Now, in this case, since we do not have the exact, exact format in the right-hand side, you have to take, um, you have to, to apply factoring method. But this is quite different from the previous example because uh, there was a common factor. Here, though, we have a common factor, but we have to follow exactly how, how, how we factor out the usual. So this time, take note, guys, that you have to factor out whatever is the numerical coefficient of the variable in the degree of 1. Okay? So again, you have to factor out whatever is the numerical coefficient of the variable in the degree of 1. So the variable in the degree of 1 here is x. So you have to factor out its numerical coefficient. Uh, no matter what happens to this one, as long as you have to factor out. This is the standard. You have to factor out the numerical coefficient of the variable in the degree of 1. So this time, you have to factor out negative 8. Okay? So the equation will actually look like this one. So factor out negative 8. Then, of course, that will be the number that you have to divide to both terms. So in other words, you have negative 8 here outside and negative 8x divided by negative 8, the result is x. Negative 4 divided by negative 8, you have the result as 1 half. Okay, so this time we have followed, we have followed the format already. Because it's necessary for the standard form of equation of the parabola for the x variable to have the numerical coefficient of 1. So in this case, we have a 1x here or just simply x. So this, might, this, this must be x. If you apply the, um, the way we factor out, no? the usual way we factor out, of course, we say that the common factor for this one is negative 4, right? But if you divide negative 8 by negative 4, the result will be 2x and not this exact format x. Okay, so you have to remember, huh? you have to remember, you need to factor out whatever is the numerical coefficient of the variable in the degree of 1, okay? So, um, if you want to check, you can check. Negative 8 times x is in, negative 8x. Negative 8 times 1 half, you have negative 4, no doubt, okay? So, from here, you can already identify the opening. So, the opening, um, based on the format, you have to consider the, the variable in the degree of 1. So the variable in the degree of 1 is the x variable referring to the x-axis and the x-axis is horizontal and we have, when you have a horizontal, that means the direction is going right or going left. Okay. Now to identify the exact direction, you have to take note of the sign here in the numerical coefficient of the whole term. So you have negative 8. So since it is negative or 4p is negative, then, of course, the opening is left, okay? Then the vertex, okay? This time, guys, you have to be very careful here because most students, some of the students, rather, not, not most, no? Uh, some of the students will take the left constant first all the time. Well, it's not, it's not necessarily true in the parabola, guys, okay? So, you have to take note also, you have to bear in mind that um, y and k are always paired out. So they are always paired. And then x and h are always paired as well. And then the vertex as defined, that should be h and k. So you should take h first and then k. 
So in other words, you have to take this constant first and then this constant. Okay? So the vertex, therefore, is negative one half and one because some students will consider one and negative one half, which is the um, which is wrong in terms of the error, in, in terms of um, the standards in um, getting the vertex of the parabola. So first, you have to take h and then k. So you have to be careful. You have to be very careful. Uh, you have to make sure that the number is representing h and the number is representing k. Then the lattice rectum. That's eight units. Though this is negative, guys, no? This is negative, but remember, lattice rectum, we are talking about the length of the lattice rectum, and it's always positive. So uh, just apply the absolute value concept. This is negative eight, but this is just eight units here because we are talking about length. No? We are talking about length of the lattice rectum. Okay, so from here, you can already draw um, the vertex or plot the vertex. Uh, you have the Cartesian plane here, the x-axis horizontal, the y-axis is vertical. Negative one-half and one is somewhere here in quadrant two. So negative one-half and then positive one. So it's in the middle. No? Then next to that, you have to uh, find the focal distance or solve for the focal distance. Remember, negative 4p is negative 8. Negative 4p is equal to negative 8. So negative 4p is a reflection of negative 8 here or the other way around, negative 8. Is the reflection of negative 4p so they're equal here okay so negative 4p is equal to negative 8 uh, algebraically they can div divide both sides by negative 4 and um, get the focal distance equal to 2 and then remember in the first example as i said the position of the focus okay you can get the position of the focus you start at the vertex and move according to the opening so the opening is left so we are to expect moving left going to the focus so we are to move left going to the focus how many units from the vertex that should be two units from the vertex so that should be somewhere here that should be from here you have one unit left and two units left again why left because we are based on the opening we expect that the parabola will look like this um, going left and so the focus looks like it is being eaten by the parabola so that is the focus of the parabola next to that um, the direct rex, right? So they have the same distance. So um, if the focus is going left, the direct rex is going right. So there should be one unit right and two units right. Okay? And again, direct rex is never a point but a line. So we have this line, vertical line for um, the direct rex of this parabola. So how do they know it's vertical? Well, if you remember, um, if the parabola is opening right or opening to the left, uh, it's the the direct rex is always vertical. But if you want logical uh, logical reasoning, it's very simple. No? If you do it horizontally, it's not anymore direct rex because it crosses the vertex. Okay, again, if this is our um um this is the the guide to get the direct rex to draw the the line. If you do it horizontally, well, what happens? It it passes through the vertex. We do not. The direct rex is not passing through. It will never pass through the vertex. Okay? So in short, since it is, pass it is not possible to be horizontal, then it should be vertical. Okay? That's for the direct rex. Then next to direct rex is, we have the axis of symmetry. As I said last time, they are just the opposite. No? So direct rex is vertical. Therefore, axis of symmetry is horizontal. And make sure to pass or to, or to draw the line, to draw the axis of symmetry. Uh, symmetry passing through the focus. So make sure that it passes through the focus and the vertex of the parabola. So this is the axis of symmetry. Okay. Next will be the lattice rectum. So how did I get here? Remember, just divide the lattice rectum by two. Anyway, guys, uh, in my examples, I have two examples already, and the lattice rectum measures eight units. But it does not happen all the time. Okay. So it can be 12, it can be 16, it can be 10, it can even be a fraction or it can be any number, okay? So in this example, we have just 8, okay? So 8 units for our lattice rectum. In short, the half of it is 4 units. So from the focus, I have to move upwards 4 units. So how did I know uh, that I have to go upwards? Well, of course, remember, um, the direct rex and the lattice rectum are parallel okay all the time they are parallel so in other words 
I should make sure that the platus rectum will be parallel. Okay, so I should move upwards and downwards to make it vertical, right? Because if it, if it is parallel, then it should be the same with the direct rex, which is vertical. So this must be vertical as well for the latus rectum. And in, or, in an, and in order for me to have a vertical latus rectum, I should be moving upwards and downwards, or I should be moving vertically, okay? But if you want logical thinking again, or logical reasoning, it is impossible for you to move going right because if it happens, there's no latus rectum. It will be overlapping on the axis of symmetry. So, well, from that point, uh, from that point, you can you can just maybe even if you forgot the idea that the rectrex and latus rectum are parallel, you can still have this guide by just using your logical thinking that it's impossible to be horizontal because it will be overlapping the axis of symmetry okay so from here there's four units going up and four units going down okay and of course this will be your latus rectum there's your r1 on top and r2 at the bottom so remember um, i mentioned last time in the first example that um, the point at the right is r1 and the point at the left will be r2 now, when we talk about the um, point on top and point at the bottom, R1 is the point on top and R2 is the point at the bottom also. Okay, so that will be the standards in labeling. R1, the first, lab the first um, end point should be the right side if we are talking about right and left. And then R1 is always the point on top if we are talking about the top and bottom. Okay. So from here, you can already draw your parabola. You already have the parabola in there. Now we have to locate the, um, the coordinates of the focus or identify the coordinates of the focus. So it's still easy because this is one half. That's basically negative two and one half. And then you can just change it into um, improper fraction. But if you want to be formal, then you can just apply the concept in the review. So first, we started at the vertex. And from the vertex going to the focus, that's horizontal movement. So horizontal movement, meaning there's a change in X because it's horizontal. Now, since there's a change in X um, and it's going left, so obviously we have to subtract, okay? We have to subtract what? We have to subtract how many units we move two units so subtract two units um, to the x coordinate of the vertex so from the vertex we have negative one half which is the x coordinate so the x coordinate should be subtracted by two i mean by by, by two i just i'm right now negative one half one half um, minus two will give you negative five halves so we, anyway where did i get two uh, well, of course, that is the focal distance. Always remember, whatever is the movement, num uh, the number of units, uh, that will be the number that either you add or subtract depending on the direction. So at this time, we subtracted two units because that is the number of units that, that we move from the vertex going to the focus. So negative one half starting point, and then minus two, you have negative five halves. Of course, you only need to copy one here. Then R1, so from R1, I mean, um, in getting R1, we started at the focus. So what we did was, um, from the focus, we move up to R1. So it's moving upwards. In other words, this vertical movement. If there's vertical movement, remember, there's a change in Y. So identify the starting point that should be at the focus. So we started at the focus. It's moving upward. There's a change in the y coordinate. So I have to change one. Okay? So how many units? We move four units upwards. So in other words, you actually have plus four. So only you only, all you have to do is to copy negative five halves and change one. So how um how many units? It changes four units upwards. So there should be one plus four. And that should that becomes five here for R1. And then for R2, all you have to do is to subtract. Okay, so from, uh, from the focus, you have 1 here and then minus 4, of course, right? Because you move 4 units going down. So negative 5 halves, that's copy lang. And then 1 minus 4, 
that should be negative 3, 4, R2. And then the equation of the direct rex. The equation of direct rex, again, this is the direct rex, it's vertical. It passes through or it intercepts the x axis. So you, you are now concerned with the x variable. Again, where do we start? We start at the vertex and then we move two units going right. Okay, so we started at the vertex. What is the x variable of the vertex? That's negative one half. That's why you have here x equals negative one half. Now, where did it, where did this plus two coming from? Of course, from the vertex you move two units to obtain this point here, the position of the direct rex. Okay, so that's why from the starting point negative one half we added two units. So negative one half plus two, then that should be x equals three halves. Okay. So from there, um, since there's no fraction for the general form of equation of the line, then you can just multiply the whole equation by 2. So multiply the whole equation by 2, you will have 2x, and then 3 halves times 2, you will have 3. For others, actually, they are using um, cross multiplication here. 2 times x is 2x, 3 times 1 is 3. Okay, so whatever it is, wherever you're comfortable with in doing the algebra, as long as you are not violating any rules in mathematics, then it's really fine. Okay, so the final equation for the direct rex is 2x minus 3 equals 0. Then the equation of the axis of symmetry. As I said last time in the previous video, in the previous example, it's easy to get the axis of symmetry. All you have to do is to take the, um, uh, what's this? The terms inside the parentheses uh, in being squared, no? the parentheses being squared. So we have here y minus 1 is being squared. So we expect the axis of symmetry is actually y minus 1 equals 0. But if you want to be formal, all you have to do is to consider this line. This is horizontal. Therefore, it passes through or it crosses or it intercepts the y-axis. So we are very concerned of the y variable. Now just get the y variable of the vertex. A y variable of the vertex is equal to 1. In other words, you have y equals 1. And so you have y minus 1 equals 0. As the equation of the axis of symmetry but if you want again if you want to be um, if you want to get it right away from the equation just consider the term inside the parenthesis um, that parent that term being squared in the parenthesis what did I say <laughs> that term inside the parenthesis okay that term inside the parenthesis which is being squared because there's also another term here but this is this is in the degree of one this is in the degree of two so take note, you have to take the term inside the parenthesis in the degree of 2. Okay, that parenthesis in the degree of 2 rather. So, okay, that's it guys for graphing parabolas. Thank you for watching my videos. I hope you have got, you got something from, from the discussion. So, see you in the next videos. Goodbye.